also made yellow and orange. Sorry, my dogs really love these crystals. <laughs> hey guys, it's Ro, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be making something that we've never made before. We are gonna be making gummy crystal candies. I'm really excited because this is a very traditional Japanese confection. Traditionally, they're in kind of a cube shape, but they become more popular on TikTok because people and artists and candy makers are making them more hyper-realistic to look like actual crystals. They're super trendy right now and I thought, We've never made them, let's give it a go. What makes this candy really special is the consistency. It looks like it's going to be a hard candy, like a Jolly Rancher, and the outside is slightly hard, but then you bite into it and it's soft, it's gummy. It's like a, uh, the best way I could describe it, maybe like a Turkish delightish. It's, it's, it's its own thing. Also, the Japanese candy has a beautiful name that I can't pronounce, and I'm not gonna butcher it for you guys. So I'll just ding, put it on the screen. All right, now without further ado, do, let's get started. Let's make some candies. Woo! One thing to note when you're making these candies, you wanna have everything laid out in front of you right when you're starting because time is of the essence when you're making candy. You wanna have your water, your agar agar, your sugar, a little bit of citric acid, candy flavoring, some heat safe measuring cups, and a heat safe Hand, which I've already greased. So it's nice and greased, ready to go. And last but not least, a couple airbrush colors and some little paint brushes if you need them. Also, all of the ingredients and their measurements will be in the description down below. So if you wanna follow along at home, you can. Before you put the heat on, we're gonna combine the agar agar and our water in a saucepan. So just pour it in, Ooh, pour in all the water and we're gonna let it sit here for five minutes. Turn the heat on to high while constantly stirring so you don't get any lumps and bring it to a simmer. Once it's come to a simmer, you're gonna continue to cook for about two to three minutes. Now add all of the sugar into the saucepan and we're gonna continue to stir and cook for another two to three minutes. All right, this is looking good. It's all ready. You're gonna turn off the heat and then we're gonna add our two next ingredients. Our flavoring, this can be any flavoring that you'd like. I'm doing watermelon and some citric acid. We're gonna mix together. This already looks beautiful, wow. Next, we're gonna divide this in thirds. I'm just gonna eyeball it, adding it into these two heat safe measures. Here we go. And the other third, I'm gonna leave in the pot. I'm gonna be a little bit more generous with this one. I think it needs a little more. All right, and if we end up with a little less in the pot, that's okay. Now we've separated them because we're going to color them. I'm using airbrush color, pink and purple, just because it's a little bit easier to mix in. So we're just gonna take a little paintbrush and mix it around. And you can see if you like that color, you wanna make it a little darker. Then we'll do the same thing for the purple dye. It doesn't take much, which is something I also really love. Like, look at that beautiful color you get from just a drop. Now, for the rest of the candy we've got in the pan, I'm just gonna add a drop of white. Now my white mixture isn't pure white, it's a little pinky milky, and that's okay because that's from the flavoring. Now we're gonna pour it into the pan before we pop it in the fridge. Once you got the two colors in the pan, and now we're gonna take the one off of the stove. It's our white, or maybe, you know, milky pink, and I'm gonna try to pour it down the middle. And if it moves around a little bit, that's okay, because I think it's just gonna make it look even cooler. This is the fun part. You can be a little artsy, grab your little paintbrush or toothpick, whatever you have in the kitchen, and you can just make some swirls, make some designs. Ooh, okay, look at that. We've got all these swirls, and you can dip it in the extra coloring over here and add some more swirls, kind of to look like marble. Look at that. This is my favorite part because it's like decorating and you can just get really artsy. This is a really unique candy because you can never make the same one twice. They always look a little bit different. Every candy you make is one of a kind. Now we're gonna pop this into the refrigerator for about one to two hours until it's firm to touch. Oh, oh, and I gotta be really careful. Now while that's sitting in the fridge, I'm gonna clean this up and we've got the time, so let's make another color combo. I repeated all the same steps as before, and now we're going to color our candy. Now this time, I'm gonna be coloring the candy green, blue, and I'm gonna be leaving this candy clear. Dip into the airbrush coloring and swirl around. Look at that! 
Oh, that's beautiful. Same technique as last time. You're gonna take two of the colors. We've got green and blue, and I'm gonna pour them on opposite ends of a greased pan. Making this candy truly feels like food is art. Now we're gonna take the last of our candy, and it's clear, and we're gonna pour right down the middle. I'm gonna attempt to. And again, I'm gonna take my little paintbrush, dip in just some extra color, just add a little bit more dimension. So now I'm gonna go pop this in the fridge like our other candies, and I am going to make a ton more color colors because this is so much fun. This is like art therapy. I just took the first sheet of candy out of the fridge. I used the spatula, went around the edges just to loosen it in the pan. On top of a cutting board using a sharp cutting knife, I'm just gonna start cutting our crystals. I'm also gonna be trying to do some diagonal because I wanna get crystals with both of the colors in it. But this is also where you can get really creative and make any shape of crystal you want. And remember, your cuts don't even have to be perfect because we are gonna carve these pieces into a bunch of different shapes. Now I'm gonna cut this in half so it isn't as tall. Now using a smaller cutting knife, I'm just gonna trim the bottom, the sides, create some dimension, and I'm gonna save all the little scraps. I'm gonna put them into a bowl right here. Now I'm just gonna take a small cutting knife and carve some of the edges on the sides, create some dimension for these crystals. And for this, it also looks a little bit more natural if they're uneven, so you can cut in a straight line if you want them to look perfect, or you can cut them at different depths. Oh my gosh, this is so satisfying to cut. It reminds me of some of those soap videos. Art is therapy. This is soothing. Okay, I just made another one, but what we're gonna do is you're gonna take your little knife, I'm gonna cut down, and then I'm gonna cut underneath a little bit. All right, then using the big knife, I'm just gonna cut small, more precise edge. And when you're doing this, if your knife gets too sticky, just over here on the side, I have some warm water. So you just dip the knife in and then dry off with a clean kitchen rag. There we go. And then we're gonna cut in here. And this one, look how cool that looks. Once you're done with your candies, you're gonna place them onto a half sheet pan lined with a piece of wax paper. And we're gonna stick them on here. The wax paper keeps them from sticking. Now you can just keep making as many different crystal shapes and designs as you'd like. And now I'm gonna show you how to make some little crystal clusters. Kinda reminds me of when I made some mineral cupcakes back in the day using Jolly Ranchers to look like the ones in StarCraft too. That was pretty cool. You're gonna take your scraps and a bunch of these straight edge designs is what you want. So we're gonna use our sharp cutting knife and chop them up. Chop, chop, chop. Got our cluster of crystals and look, made these smaller little crystals. We're gonna make a little patch over here of them. Oh my gosh, look at this. We can make some vertical crystals, put our crystal clusters around them. To make this little cluster, I put down my little scraps first and then my larger pieces on top of it. Once you've got all of your designs, I've got a few on here, but I'm going to make a ton more. The last step to making these candies is you're gonna let them sit out for four days total. After two days, you're gonna flip them over. So they sit out for four days total, but after two days, they will develop a crust. Then you can turn them and they won't stick. I know you may be thinking that four days is a really long time to wait for these candies, but that's actually just the minimum. You can actually let these set out for many more days, and the longer they sit, they'll develop a thicker crust, like more of a crunch when you bite into the gummy. It's so cool. Also gonna be the longest four days of my life, but that's okay. So these are all the ones that I made a couple days ago, and I'm gonna show you what they look like in different stages. Now, all of these crystal gummies have been sitting out for two days, and as you can see, some of them have crusted all the way on the top and they're ready to flip and then some of them you'll see it looks a little tacky it still looks a little wet and see-through as soon as these little tacky see-through parts disappear then they can flip so this is two days in these are almost ready and then over here I've actually let these set out longer so you can see what they look like these have sat out for four days so you can see the top right here there's no tacky sticky looking candy it's really made that hard crust so I'm gonna 
flip these over. I'm gonna show you how to do it. You just pick up any side, still be gentle, and flip. And as you can see, the bottom has a little bit of that tackiness. And now we're gonna dry these out. These ones are a little bit tricky because sometimes when they look like they've hardened all the way through, in the very center, there could be just be a little bit that's still a little gooey. All of these have been flipped. We can let those sit for another two days. Now these ones aren't as dry. I think they need one more day, but there's a few pieces here that look to have set on top so we can flip them. Like this little crystal we can turn over. This one probably needs some extra time to dry because there's a lot of density in there. So we're gonna give that one a few more days. So I'm gonna wait and then we'll flip these as well. And then we'll have a ton of crystal gummies. Now, once your crystals have set on all four sides and they have dried, we can decorate using luster dust. I have made a ton more crystals. We've got the pink and purples, we have the greens, but I also made yellow and orange. Sorry, my dogs really love these crystals. <laughs> We've got silver luster dust and gold luster dust. Now, to use this, if you've never used this before, decorating with luster dust, is you just need to take a little bit of alcohol. I use a little dropper to make things a little bit easier. You can also use an extract, like lemon extract. I like lemon because it's clear, it's got alcohol in it, and it smells really good. It smells and tastes pretty good. The benefit of using just a clear alcohol, like vodka, is it's not adding any extra flavor to your gummies. You can mix together and you can see how nice that looks. You can use this little brush to add some definition to all of the lines because these lines are so pretty but we can make them even prettier. We can make them stand out by just painting on the edge. And it doesn't need to be perfect but we just want to see those edges. Boom! Look at that! First one done! This luster dust really makes these pop. It's like highlighter on your cheek. Just gotta do it. Some decorating options. You can hit the corners of the gem or give the whole thing a covering. And you can do a light covering so it has a little bit of shimmer. I love all the decorating because it kind of reminds me of makeup and putting on makeup is really artsy. I am loving the gold detail, but let's try to make some silver. Gold is definitely my favorite metal, but silver is so beautiful. This one looks like the ocean. Oh my gosh. Now I'm just gonna keep decorating little details on all these little crystals. Decorate till your heart's content. Ta-da, here's all the gummy crystal candies that we made today. I mean, you can see they're so versatile. You can really cut them and carve them into so many different shapes. Okay, I don't know which one to bite into. I feel so bad. These are gorgeous. I feel, okay, oh, okay. I'm gonna bite into this one. We'll see what we got. crunchy all the way around. I love that noise and the little hum. And then when you get in there, I mean, you can see this. Look, it's a little gummy. And these ones are watermelon. <laughs> this is so cool. This recipe is amazing. I have never made a gummy candy that had this shell around it. And I love the fun twists that people have been putting onto this candy, like making some of them look hyper realistic. And what's really cool about these is that they're vegan because we didn't use gelatin to make it. We used agar agar. And for anyone who isn't familiar, it's actually made from red algae. It's also really cool because you could never tell from the taste. It doesn't taste like algae. So if any of you are making candy at home, it might be a really cool replacement for you to try. Some of my favorites here are the mineral clusters. These just have a soft spot in my heart because I spent so many years watching StarCraft. They look just like the minerals you mine. I mean, they're just too cute. And this one is so cool. It looks like the planet Earth. Look at that. You can make all the different planets. With these treats, the options are limitless, and I think you should give them a try. I think these would make really great gifts for people who are into different rocks and crystals. I have a lot of friends who collect them. I even have some relatives who like to keep really beautiful pieces. Or, <gasps> birthstones! You can make these to look like somebody's birthstone for their birthday. All right, that does it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, click subscribe, it's free, and ring the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. And let me know in the comments down below if there's any other recipes that you would like to see me make because this one was really cool. It is my first time making these and not my last. All right, bye you guys. And if you'd like to watch any other videos, you can click up here or up here. Whichever one rocks your socks. <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go. I need to, uh, I gotta go.